Hi guys, welcome you all to the today's session. Today we are going to see about Navy Base Classifier. So what is Navy Base Classifier? It's nothing but it's a probabilistic machine learning model that is used for classification task. It's a supervised learning method. Okay, so here we are going to see a formula where P of A slash b equal to p of b slash a into p of a divided by b, p of b usually we read it like this but in navy's classifier you have to read it like p of a conditioned on b p is nothing but probability p of a conditioned on b equal to p of b conditioned on a into p of a divided by p of b let's see what are all this uh, p of a p of b and then p of a conditioned on b and p of b conditioned on it so using this first equation, we can find the probability of occurrence of A given B. And uh, here in Navy's we call it as evidence. In normally we say, suppose that there is a, a data tuple called B. Okay, normally we say a data tuple, we name a data tuple as B. Whereas in Navy's classifier, that data tuple is actually called as evidence, nothing else. Just a data tuple is called as a evidence in a uh, Navy's classifier. Okay, so what is this uh, hypothesis? What could be the hypothesis? Hypothesis is nothing but some hypothesis such that tuple B, that is my data tuple B, that is my evidence B, belong to a specified class C. I told you it's a classification problem. So obviously the evidence, the data tuple, normally we say this B as a data tuple, this B data tuple should fall under some classification. So it should be classified under some specific class, right? So that's, that, high, that assumption is nothing but your hypothesis. So some hypothesis such that my tuple B belongs to some specific class C. Okay, that is nothing but your hypothesis. Then what is Navy's features? Actually, Navy's features are independent. So, I'll give an example for this. Wait, I'll give you an example. First, let me tell you this. Okay. Uh, let's say we have two features, age and income. Okay. So, with this age and income itself, I'll explain you how this age and income are actually independent in Navy's. Okay. So, let's say we have two features, age and income, in accordance with BICE computer. So, now, my main aim is like, I'm planning to... Um, what classify the user classify the user who is uh, going to buy a computer who is going to buy a computer okay so what happens so i'm going to say like probability of uh buys computer with the um features age and income so the probability of age conditioned on bias computer so it's like bias computer condition on age and income is equal to probability of age conditioned on bias and computer probability of income conditioned on bias and computer i have two attributes so two attributes i'm just making a hypothesis that's all okay so divided by p of age into p of income okay so this is nothing but just i'm telling you the probability suppose this bias computer is conditioned on is dependent on age and income what are all the possibilities of this probabilities okay so the bias computer this bias computer is dependent on age or income okay so how will you classify um, uh, classify that a customer will buy computer or not so i have two class here class here for that is s or no that is if my customer is going to buy a computer then it's going to belong to the it's going to um, fall under the category class s if my customer is not going to buy a computer then he is going to fall under the category or class no okay so see here the buys computer is dependent on age or income it is dependent on either on age or income but these features are not independent okay so this buys computer are dependent or this buys computer category is dependent on either age or income okay so or both maybe either age or income or maybe both but this age is no way related to the income yes maybe if you want to say like a very lesser uh, age person is going to uh, get a very high income and a very uh, old age people might also get a very less income so this age is nowhere dependent to income here that's why we are saying like naive base is actually the future independent we saw this uh, point right naive base features are independent 
so that's what this example i have explained so device computer is independent on age or income but these features are not dependent on each other to buy a computer hence the name nave base okay so i hope now you have understood you would have understood uh, why nave base uh, features are independent okay so now here uh, the same formula that is uh, p of uh, a conditioned on b okay so i've just replaced the variable as uh, p of for a i've given as y and then for b i've given x that's all okay so see here this p of a in this formula p of uh, so i'll write it here so p of b conditioned um, i'll write the p of b conditioned on a into p of a divided by p of b okay fine so i just don't want to turn over the, turn over the page so i have written the uh, previous formula here okay so p of a is nothing but the priori or it's also called as priori probability of a so this in this formula this is called as this is called as priori probability what is priori probability the customer will buy computer regardless of age or income or any other information that is my uh, probability my uh, p of a that is called pro priori probability because that is not going to dependent or it's not going to rely on any of the information like age or income or any other information of the customer that is nothing but priori probability then what is this uh, p of a conditioned on b that is called as posterior probability of b what is posterior probability it depends it depends on some other information for a particular customer to categorize into some classes or to classify it into some classes okay so posterior probability is more information based than priori probability okay so priori probability is nothing but probability of event before evidence is seen and then posterior probability is probability of event after evidence is seen that's what priori probability have uh, uh, occurred before the evidence is seen before the data tuples is seen so it does not rely on any other information whereas posterior probability it rely on the evidences different data tuples okay so this is my uh, equation here so p of y condition x is equal to p of x condition on y so both are called posterior probability because it is conditioned on something and then uh, p of y and p of x is nothing but uh, priori probability yeah priori probability both are posterior probability so it's both are posterior probability p of y and p of x are priori probability because they do not rely on any other information got it so where y is a class variable and x is a dependent feature of size n where see here i have rewritten this formula i have written this third formula like this that is i told you this x this b is nothing but a data tuple so there will be n number of data tuple in my records in my database yes so this b will be like b1 b2 b3 b4 yes whereas this um, y is nothing but a hypothesis only one class or two class or three classes will be there okay so see here x is equal to x1 x2 x3 to xn that is set of customers according to our example set of customers in our record with uh, 35 years old and 40000 income because we have taken uh, an example here uh, suppose i am going to categorize a set of customers who is having 35 years old and 40000 income will buy a computer or not if he is going to buy a computer he falls under the category s and if he is not going to buy a computer he falls under the category no so that's why uh, they have told like uh, x is equal to x1 x2 x3 xn suppose we have a uh, hundred customer x1 to x100 so i have a hundred customers hundred set of customers who is having 35 years old and 40000 income and i'm going to categorize those hundred i'm going to classify those customers and see whether they fall into the class yes or no okay so p of y uh, conditioned on x1 x1 to xn that is called posterior probability so p of x1 conditioned on y p of x2 conditioned on y these are all different different records okay so this is called likelihood the possibility of occurrences into p of y which is nothing but priori probability and divided by p of a uh, probability of different data tuples or different evidences this is called predictor priori probability okay okay so 
that's all about the uh, introduction of navies now we are going to see about the uh, few, uh, a simple example here so here i have a very small data set i have three types of fruits here banana orange and others so i have three attributes here lengthy sweet yellow okay and the total okay so banana is in 400 bananas are lengthy in my data set 350 bananas are sweet in my data set and 450 bananas are yellow in my data set. I'm going to take orange, zero bananas are lengthy in my data set. Obviously, orange will not be lengthy, it will be round circle. So, orange will be 150 uh, sweet uh, in under sweet category and then orange, uh, 300 uh, oranges in our data set are yellow. So, others like uh, 100 are lengthy, 150 sweet and then 50 yellow. So, if we take the total of this, it will be... Uh, uh, if you take the, to the banana, you have uh, 500 uh, bananas, you have orange, you have 300 oranges, you have in total. And then others, you have 200 uh, total. And then if you add up this, you will have uh, lengthy 500 fruits, sweet 650 fruits, and then yellow 800 fruits. Okay. So this is a very small data set I've taken. So now I have to find. So according to this formula, according to this formula, according to this formula, P of Y condition on X is equal to P of X condition on Y into P of Y divided by P of X. According to this formula, I've written this P of lengthy conditioned on banana, P of sweet conditioned on banana. We saw this formula, right? So P of X1 conditioned on Y and then um, P of X2 conditioned on Y and then up to P of Xn conditioned, uh, conditioned on Y. Yes, into P of Y. P of Y divided by P of X. Yes. So, see here. So, this X is nothing but length 3, sweet and then L. So, this is Y is going to be the type here. So, banana, banana, banana D into P of X. That is nothing but your, sorry, P of Y. That is nothing but your banana and divided by P of X is nothing but your length 3, sweet and L. The lengthy, sweet and L. So, these are X are all uh, uh, priori probability of the tuples, the evidences, so lengthy, sweet and yellow, okay, so these are all the types, okay, these are all the types and then into P of I, P of I is nothing but P of banana divided by P of X, that is P of lengthy, sweet and yellow, so now I am going to calculate it here, so lengthy, how many lengthy banana do I have, I have 400 lengthy banana out of total 500, okay, so it is like 500 divided by, um, yeah, five, um, Sorry, I have 400 divided by 500. So I have 400 lengthy banana in total 500. And then if it's going to be a sweet banana is like I have 350 banana out of 500. So 350 out of 500. And yellow banana I have 450 out of 500. So I have 450 out of 500. Okay. So and then uh, P of banana I have uh, 500 uh, banana. I have 300 orange and 200 others. So... 300, yeah, 300. so the final banana is 500, so it is 500 divided by 1000, what is this 1000, this is nothing but the total number of fruits I have in my data set, okay, so 500 divided by 1000, okay, and then P of lengthy, so for lengthy, how many lengthy fruits I have, 500 out of 1000, and then for sweet, I have 650, and for yellow, I have 800, so see here, so lengthy is uh, 500, out of uh, like total fruits and then 650 uh, divided by total fruits and 800 divided by total fruits that's nothing but 0 0.8 0 0.65 5.5 so now i'm going to substitute all the factors in my all the factors in my formula so this is uh, nothing but uh, P of uh, lengthy conditioned on banana, P of uh, sweet conditioned on banana, P of uh, yellow conditioned on banana into P of banana divided P of lengthy, P of sweet and then P of uh, yellow. Okay, so I got the answer as 0 0.96. The probability of a fruit being lengthy, sweet and yellow is 0 0.96. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate for the orange. So I already um, have uh, zero here as one of my value. So everything is in multiplication. So lengthy of orange into sweet orange into yellow of orange into orange divided by P of lengthy into P of sweet into P of yellow. So this term is going to be zero. So obviously my entire thing will be zero. So the probability of being an orange to be lengthy, sweet and yellow is equal to 100. 
and then now uh, I'm going to kind of find the probability of other fruits which is lengthy, sweet and yellow. So the same thing is uh, actually applied here. So the same formula, P of lengthy of uh, condition on others, sweet condition on others, yellow condition on others into P of others divided by the evidences, probability of evidences. So likewise we calculate and we get the answer as 100 divided by 200, 150 divided by 200, 50 divided by 200. 200 divided by 1000 and then 0.5 into 0.68 into 0.8 which we get the probability of answer as 0.0721 okay so our final answer is the probability of a banana to be lengthy sweet and yellow is 0.96 and the probability of orange to be lengthy sweet and yellow is 0 and then the probability of others to be lengthy sweet and yellow is 0.0721 okay so which is uh, having a higher probability we say like if it's a probability 0 to 1 right if it's very closer to 0 the probability is less if it's very closer to 1 the probability is high so which is having a highest probability which food is going to be have a highest probability of being length sweet and yellow it's obviously 0 0.96 because it's 0 0.07 which is almost closer to 0 so therefore uh, the fruit with features lengthy sweet and yellow is classified as banana so this is what um, uh, with a small data set I have explained you about the Navy's classifier. Also, I have given a basic introduction about the Navy's classifier. Hope you all understand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys.